This is the third and last part of the review of the Tesla Model S P85 from 2013, which has done a whopping 210,000 kilometers or 130,000 miles. So in this part, I will talk about the overall the user experience. So like, how was it to use this car to you know have issues with it and all that stuff? Yeah. So I will go through some uh, topics. The first topic and very important one is about charging. Next one is about performance, like how it works and all that, and power. Uh, third one is about remote access with um, uh, the supplied uh, mobile app, which uh, Tesla made, and also some third-party apps. The next topic is about interior, exterior, and how much luggage space you can have in this car. And then I have to talk about support and service, like what happened when I have issues and like how did they solve it and you know, stuff like that. Was I uh, happy with it? And then there is actually a separate video about issues and repairs with this car because, well, I'm not gonna lie to you, it has some issues. And the next topic is about running costs, like how much did it actually cost to own this car to, you know, in regards of charging and repairs and service and all that. That's also in another separate video. Just make, check it out if you wanna see it, if you wanna know more about it. And then uh, second to last uh, topic is, is Tesla a car for you? Yeah, I'll try to figure it out, give you some hints about how it would be for you. And of course, also very important question is, would you buy a Tesla again? Yeah, so I will uh, come back to that. So back to first topic about charging. So um, we have charging on short trips. Short trips will be usually you know, around the city and all that stuff. But again, this is uh, Tesla. We are talking about Tesla Model S, so it has pretty huge battery. But usually when you um, when you charge on short trips, you plug in at home or at work or a shopping mall. Because uh, most of the time the car is sitting still at work for 8 hours or at home for like 15 hours. And during that time you might as well charge your car. And it doesn't matter if it charges a bit slow. So that's usually how it works. You just plug it in when you're gonna stay there for a while anyway. And actually that thing when you plug it in saves you a lot of time because if you think about it, if you have a fossil car, okay, well, if fossil car is basically a car that runs on gasoline, diesel, uh, whatever that uh, comes from fossils, I just call it fossil cars. And fossils are the people who drive the car. Yeah, yeah, I just lost a bunch of subscribers now, but anyway, yeah. Um, so, um, you actually save a lot of time in comparison to um, having a fossil car because if you have a fossil car you have to go to this gas station every I don't know it depends how far you drive but you have to w visit the gas station wait for the refuel maybe pay for it and stuff maybe you got some schmutz on your hands you have to wash especially if you have a diesel car yeah and all that stuff so actually on short trips having an electric car most of the time you will actually save time instead of having a gasoline car and because we're talking about Tesla here, Tesla can usually do about 300 kilometers or 200 miles in a single charge. So you can actually take kind of long trips. Well, it depends how you define it, but you can take uh, trips without having to recharge. And also big advantage is that electricity is everywhere. Gasoline actually isn't everywhere. Hydrogen is certainly not everywhere, but that's another topic. So, you know, the thing that you plug in anywhere where you can stay, you know, uh, like hotel or restaurant or at home, most important at home and at work. This is like the greatest advantage of having an EV, that you have this electricity accessible everywhere. All right, so that was a short trip. So then talk a little bit about the, the long trip or the medium trips. So most of the time, you will start up with um, 90 to 100 percent battery most of the time. Yeah, there will be times when you won't be have the opportunity to do that, but uh, most of the time you will be able to do that. And 
if you do short like well, medium trips I would say about 300 kilometers or 200 miles like I just mentioned then most of the time you don't actually have to recharge but if you have to drive longer let's say 500 kilometers 300 miles then um, you most of the time you have to stop for like 15 to 30 minutes to fill up the battery so that you can uh, reach your destination and well I don't know about you but uh, if I would drive 500 kilometers there are some biological uh, needs that uh, eventually will uh, pop up and uh, then I have to go to the restroom and also 500 kilometers usually takes like in Norway it takes um, six to eight hours to drive so um, I also want to have some food and all that stuff so the 15 to 30 minutes I was talking about it's actually not a big deal uh, you will usually just plug it in at the supercharger and then you do whatever you need and then most of the time the car is ready before you are ready yeah so um but then okay and the third like uh, setting is if you have to do long trips like i've done sometimes yeah and the long trips are like longer than 500 kilometers then Eventually, if you do that really long trips, you have to wait for the car because in, like What I just uh, picture is like you actually start with a buffer and then You use up some of the buffer and then you refill the buffer But eventually if you do a, a long trip the buffer will be spent and you have to wait for the car But again, you know long trips over 500 kilometers Those are less frequent for most normal people unless they have a job that requires them to drive a lot but as for most people like using it as a family car I don't know about other people's uh, needs but uh, maybe they only do these long trips a couple of times a year or maybe once a month and then you know you can live with that most people can live with that especially if they know that the supercharging is free so um, the um, the fossils, yeah, all right, sorry for using that expression, but you know what I mean. The fossils, people who drive fossil car, they always come up with this argument that uh, I want to have a car that can drive 1,000 kilometers or 600 miles, and then I want to refuel within five minutes, and then I just want to do 1,000 kilometers more. But are they not human? Are they robots or something? Are they Terminator from the future? Because they also need have some needs right so I my personal opinion about that uh, claim is that it is an imaginary claim like imaginary need it's a need that most people don't have because most people have to eat and take a rest and do stuff so um, yeah I don't know I don't know what to say about that but uh, I think even if an uh, electric car would go 1,000 km and recharge in five minutes. You know, the fossils still don't want the car. So it was just like an excuse for not wanting a car in the first place or something. So, um, but then again, there has been trips, especially when you have access to high-speed uh, motorways, let's say in France, when you can cruise at 130 km per hour or even in uh, Germany, then the consumption goes up quite a lot especially if you're running on uh, wet roads with um, headwinds and stuff that eats up the long range so there are places in the world where uh, Tesla more or less sorry to say that for you guys for the fans that uh, the battery and the charging uh, infrastructure is still today not fast enough if you want to travel like in smooth speeds so I actually think that um, if the Tesla eventually comes out with 120 to 150 kilowatt hour battery packs and superchargers that can do 150 to 200 kilowatt about 50 kilometers between them then that is plenty yeah so then there is like almost no excuse not to get a Tesla or another electric car that can run on this supercharger network all right uh, this video is gonna be freaking long so um stay with me then yeah 
All right, so um, again, let me talk a little bit about the distance between superchargers. I will take the 85 kilowatt hour battery pack as a as an example. You know, today we have as of 2016, we actually have 90 kilowatt hour battery packs. But I will use the 85 because I know that uh, best. So the 90 and 85 is uh, close. It's just like six percent difference or something. So what I have experienced, again, I have to tell you that I have used supercharger network a lot. I have probably recharged on, and I haven't. Obviously, I haven't counted how many times I've charged on superchargers. But um, let's say 500. 1,000 times or something, yeah, about that. But um, charging on superchargers is like on the bottom. It is fast. If you enter the supercharger with um, low state of charge, I mean, like low battery, right? You will charge fast. Uh, the you know, the charging speed that the Tesla uh, claims, like the 120 kilowatt. Or actually, I think they actually claim higher, like 135 kilowatts, but there's no place in the world you get that. You will get the highest one most people have seen is 118 kilowatt. But that is only uh, possible when you reach the supercharger with about 10% battery. And you also need to have not too hot battery and not too cold. So there are like lots of stuff that has to be in place before you get that uh, super speed but not only that but you will only um, receive that uh, super speed for about uh, 20 ish something percent and then it will uh, start to decrease in speed so recharging to about 70 to 80 percent at supercharger is really fast actually i sometimes i even go as low as 60 percent because i enjoy the super speed uh, yeah and uh, most of the time especially in summer i don't need to use that much energy but you see you're i mean most I mean, most people you know, they will think what if you what what if you don't charge that much but uh, drive slower because actually if you drive slower you will save energy but here's the thing supercharger they charge so fast so it is actually better to to drive almost as fast as possible to get to the supercharger and then charge up because the simple math is a supercharger usually on average it will charge about 400 to 600 kilometers per hour and you can't drive that fast yeah so I have done some tests and I found out that uh, well I done some tests and at least on my test and driving at 160 kilometers per hour and then charging at the supercharger was faster than driving at 120 kilometers per hour. But that was just one condition. There will be several parameters that will, uh, you know, uh, yeah, that will make the result uh, different, and the speed, the optimal speed, will be different uh, depending on if you have headwind, uh, luggage, uh, roof rack, and stuff and stuff. Yeah, but in general, you know, driving faster will will uh, get you faster. Yeah, within the law, of course. But, um, so you see, um, ideally, you need like 100 to 150 kilometers or, or 60 to 100 miles between each supercharger. That's like the, the optimal distance because uh, if you have longer distance than that, let's say 200 kilometers or 125 miles, especially in winter, it will take longer to recharge because as I mentioned earlier recharging to 60 70 80 percent is fast but if you have to recharge to like 90 percent that takes longer it takes slower so you see instead of let's say charging to I mean instead of going 200 kilometers to the next supercharger if there was another supercharger in between then it would be faster to charge just enough let's say 50 percent drive 100 kilometers and then charge again and then drive 100 kilometers yeah i think you get my idea so but you see this like issue i'm uh, talking about it doesn't i mean we already have the technology we have superchargers available we have the car the battery the only thing we need is to install more superchargers yeah that's simple it doesn't need any more uh, research than that 
And let's talk a little bit about the uh, supercharger um, network expansion. So I got this car in November 2013. That's uh, a little over two years now. And um, back then we had six superchargers in Europe. And I, I actually managed to get around there and I, I was driving a lot despite only six superchargers, net, uh, superchargers in, in Europe and also, yeah, also worth to mention that all the six superchargers in Europe, they were located in Norway and Norway is kind of large in area and uh, also has lots of mountains and all that stuff but it was uh, possible. That was back in 2013. Now today we have 2000 and, I mean, sorry, sorry, so many numbers and shit. Today, a little over two years later, we have 218 superchargers. But th again, these numbers that I'm listing now, I mean, these could be outdated already. It could pass 220, but over, over 200 and something superchargers in Europe. And that's a freaking enormous expansion. And only in Norway, we have 25 superchargers now. So that's a lot. And that's probably because we have so many Teslas in Norway. Norway has roughly 10% of all Teslas in the world. Yeah, and that has something to do with the incentives we have in Norway and also low electricity price and all that stuff. But yeah, that's another topic. So um, not only that, but we also have increased numbers of charging stations in uh, Norway. When I'm talking about like um, fast chargers, you know, the, the 50 kilowatt DC chargers with Shalomo and the CCS that the, the smaller cars use. And also we have a 22 kilowatt uh, AC type 2, the semi-fast uh, charging stations also, so plus the superchargers that I mentioned. So the whole charging infrastructures over two years have, have expanded a lot and I have been like well, I haven't been from the beginning. The beginning was probably 2005 or something. I don't know when the whole electric car revolution started, but uh, I joined in 2013 in the early days of Tesla Model S. And the, the charging has improved a lot. That's only after two years. Two years is not really that long if you think about it. And yeah, so, and that's about the, the charging network and also, the, like, I would call it the gift from Tesla to us is the, the Chadamo adapter. Actually, they created this adapter which allows Tesla to charge at the 50 kilowatt DC chargers that the other smaller cars use. Tesla can charge on them as well, as long as he has a Chadamo plug, not the CCS plug, but as far as I know, most of the 50 kilowatt the DC chargers, they have Chadamo and uh, a CCS. I haven't seen a fast charger without the Chadamo and with only the CCS. And that one gives you a lot of juice, fast juice. So I'm not gonna explain, it's just freaking fast. Yeah, it's like about half the speed of a supercharger. So all that stuff will, I mean, made them um, traveling around Norway and also pretty much the rest of the Europe a piece of cake <laughs> compared, compared to uh, two years ago so um, over the years I have waited less time I mean I spend less time charging and not only that but um, I also had to do less detours to visit a charger uh, like I remember a couple of years ago I had to drive like 20 minutes, a detour 20 minutes to go to a supercharger and then charge up there and then charge some extra of course and then drive 20 minutes back again. Yeah, so I had to do these stupid detours just to get enough juice but that's uh, almost history nowadays. And also not only that but um, that also meant that um, today I don't have to charge 200% that often. Back in the days, in the old days, when I had to do some long trips without the charges between, I had to do like 
over 90, 95%, 97%. Not only did it take a lot of time, but charging to that high level is also not good for the battery health. So nowadays, most of the time, I can just charge with like 80, 90%, yeah, and then good to go. All right, um, next topic is actually, let's talk a little bit about the car because we talk about lots of other stuff outside the car, but I consider that those topics important. So, uh, the Tesla, how is it to drive it? Well, it is uh, it is so simple and I get spoiled. Also, Tesla, well, this is um, most electric cars, they don't need a gearbox because electric motors, they are strong, they have low, uh, they have um, good torque at low RPM, unlike fossil cars, fossil engines. So, Tesla doesn't have an, an, a gearbox, it has a reduction gear, that's it. That means no gear changes, and that in combination with, um, you know, when you let let off the pedal, the car will, um, I mean, the, the motor will revert the process and act as a generator and generate power, and that thing will, that process will slow down the car, and you get energy back, you get electricity back to the car as the car uh, de-accelerates, yes. And in reality, we have this thing called one pedal driving that I only use the accelerator pedal to either accelerate and then when I let off, I slow down. So that is so easy driving uh, in combination that I don't have to change gear. When I do trips, like outside the city or actually when I'm in, in the city, it is so simple. So when I have issues with a car, yeah, unfortunately I have it, and I have loners, it's like, holy crap, I have to go back to this thing when I have to change gear and then I have to actually use the brake pedal on that. So it's using the Tesla Model S is really, really simple, yeah. And not only that, but when I had those loners, those fossil cars, they are not that smooth, even, well, I'm gonna lose a lot of BMW subscribers now, but I had a BMW uh, 3 Series, I think it was called F30 or something, yeah, for you guys who know that, but even that one was like uh, sluggish every time I changed gear and stuff, but with an electric motor, with no gear changes, it is so smooth, you can slowly you know, apply power and then slowly uh, decrease power so uh, yeah it's really nice and of course like I'm doing right now you see I'm sitting inside the car I'm doing I'm using this uh, more or less as a recording studio and I don't have to idle the car I put the car in this uh, well I'll call it camper mode but uh, yeah for you guys who know what it is but it is just it's idling but well it's not running and the motor is not running but it's the heater is running and I don't um, pour out uh, toxic gasoline, I mean, toxic gas, yeah, where I'm standing now. So that's always nice. I would imagine this uh, feature is uh, good for a taxi or something, yeah, or other people who want to idle. But again, this feature like, I, like where you can heat up the car is actually a really nice feature. I will come back to later about preheating. And, you know, also like simple stuff like when I park, when I put the car in park, and then when I put the car in gear, in drive, well, it's not in gear, but you know, when I want to drive, then it automatically uh, un, uh, dis well, disengages the parking brake. It's, it's obvious, right? Well, it's not that obvious on other cars I tried. Because then I want to drive, but it's still in, in park. And, and it's not that, uh, actually a mechanical park in the other car. I don't remember what car it was. Yeah. So. The whole uh, experience with Tesla is um, it's really nice, it's, like, it's easy, you get spoiled, yeah. It's kind of hard for you to understand, maybe if you haven't driven a Tesla before, but um, yeah. And that, you see, again, my car is a 2013 model, early car, it doesn't even have power folding mirrors, yeah. But I have to mention, I have tried some uh, newer cars, the newer Model S, with autopilot. And they also have auto park, adaptive cruise control, 
Well, some I haven't tried it because as of today, uh, that feature is not implemented in Europe yet, but America has it. And someone, okay, I will explain a little bit. Autopilot is a package of uh, features, convenient features, I would say. You have automatic um, cruise control, of course, to adjust the speed according to the car in front. And then you have lane, what's it called again? Uh, auto, no, I don't have it. You see, I don't have that feature, so I don't know what it's called. But auto steer, yeah, auto steer, you, it will steer itself following either a car in front of you or just by looking at the lines it will steer the car for you so you don't have to hold a hand on the steering wheel well actually you have to do it uh, occasionally that feature is freaking awesome i love it and for your followers i will be getting a tesla model x fully loaded soon and oh that feature is gonna be insane yeah yes autopilot is like wow it's awesome and of course it will have it also has emergency brake yeah that i've seen some videos where uh, some teslas yeah the some stupid uh, driver uh, cut off the tesla i mean cut front of it but but the tesla just <laughs> reacted before the driver yeah and uh, so the situation was um, okay so all that stuff, oh yeah, and auto park, it will automatically par parallel park, and also you can do, uh, oh, what's it called again? Yeah, the other side, you mean the other, when you, you slide in the other way, you know, I, I can't uh, pronounce that uh, word, yeah, because I'm a noob. But anyway, so that those features are also implemented, and then you have this new one, it's called Summon, where, well, the Tesla Model S is equipped with, uh, it's called Home Link, where it will can send a signal to open your garage or close it and then when it summon the car you can just when you enter the you come home you can just exit the car and then you enable this summon feature and it will open the garage and then drive itself in there without any drivers without anyone in the car it will drive in the garage park there and close the garage for you and then also uh, in the morning you can just summon the car, that's where the, the name comes from, summon. You can just summon the car, it will open the garage for you, and then come out again without any drivers. Park in front of the house or something, yeah, and then close the garage doors. So that's awesome, yeah. <laughs> I don't have that feature, but I'm just telling you about it. So, um, alright, and then let's go closer into uh, the actual car. Just the next, next topic is about driving performance. So, again, electric motor has instant torque, and in the Model S, they actually tune it so that when you press the accelerator, you get instant torque. Other cars, I tried electric cars like the BMW i3, they have tuned the car differently so that when you press the accelerator, there will be a delay, but that delay is not because of uh, the, the car. I mean, it's, it's like a, a software delay they are programming, so it will feel more or less like a fossil car. But as for me, I love the instant torque that Tesla has. Really. Just press it and you get power. That's just how it's supposed to be. And what is useful for that? Well, I guess I could do drag races. I haven't done that too much. I mean, actually, I haven't done it at all. But it actually makes uh, overtaking really easy and safe. So um, usually for me, I only spend like three to five seconds to overtake uh, another car, yeah. And um, this uh, Model S is uh, equipped with a 800, no wait, no, 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 sorry. It is equipped with 600 kilo battery pack. I don't know how many pounds that is, it's like a lot, but it is heavy. So um, the battery pack is uh, located below, under the seats. I mean, like, under the cabin, pretty much, yeah. And that makes uh, low, very low center of gravity. And in twisty uh, roads, it just sticks like crazy, and it doesn't, it doesn't roll the car. It's just, it is so weird. I mean, when you drive it the first time, it is like you're driving on, um, on rails or something crazy. It is crazy. So. Um, Let's not forget this car weighs a lot. Yeah, I think that's like 4,800 pounds or, or 2,000 
well, actually, in my car, 2,300 kilos when you have some equipment and a passenger. So it's a very heavy car, but it doesn't feel that heavy. It actually feels really nimble around corners and all that. And when I'm driving, yeah, so most of the time I have to, um, yeah, stay within the speed limits. So it's not like, yeah, like the car can go faster around corners, yeah. And uh, also because this is um, this has an electric motor, it will. Um, but you don't have that. Um, you know, in a fossil car, you I don't know. You apply some power, sucks in some air, and then you brrr, and then you get some RPM. But in order to creep, let's say up a hill or when you are parking or something, you have to clutch a little bit of stuff. But again, the electric motor doesn't have a clutch. So um, it actually the the throttle for for doing like smooth uh, smooth driving it is really smooth. So it makes um, you know parking well because I don't have the super I mean I don't have the 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 park assistance so I actually have to park manually. But it makes parking or just driving in slow traffic or sometimes when I have to climb a steep hill it makes it really smooth and also actually when talking about steep hill yeah m many times especially if you have a fossil car I get like either too much power or too little power but as for this one I can like perfectly balance the car so that it stays still uphill and then I like Add a little bit more power and then I go uphill because I've, if I add too much power, then I will just start spinning. So that's also another great advantage of having an electric uh, motor. And yeah, speaking of that, um, the traction control, I don't know too much about it, but I just know that it works great because uh, the traction control works instantly. If I'm driving on slippery roads, which I actually do nowadays a lot in, in Buda. When I drive from Buda to uh, Oslo, I have to pass a few mountains with icy roads, snowy roads, slippery roads. And um, the times when uh, I um, have a little bit too much speed or maybe if I accelerate a little bit too much, then the back, because I have a rear wheel drive, the back will wiggle a little bit and then the traction control will uh, fix it and take over. Uh, sometimes it will break, let's say, uh, front wheel or something. Yeah, but it just works great. Like, I don't, yeah, I don't, uh, I don't feel um, scared or something when I'm driving. So that actually happened before when I had the, the other fossil cars. I had the BMW 5 Series rear wheel drive, and also had a, a Renault Laguna. That was a front wheel drive. But on those cars. You know, when I started to slide, I was like, oh shit, like I have no control. And then the traction control kicked in. But yeah, the, those, the traction control on those cars also work uh, okay. But uh, I feel that uh, I have better control, uh, more safety on this car. And um, as for me, well, I prefer rear wheel drive. Well, I've, I've, of course, I haven't uh, had an all wheel drive for any. I, mean, I don't have all wheel drive yet, but. Um, as of today, I actually think that the rear-wheel drive works great. Again, I had the rear-wheel drive um, BMW before. That was also an awesome car. Yeah, it was a lot lighter than this car. But despite the extra weight on this one, I still feel that I have the same uh, control in winter conditions with this one. And uh, I mentioned earlier about um, the regen. You know, well, well okay, uh, we call it regen. So um, regen means uh, regenerative braking. Uh, where the motor will uh, act as a dynamo and then you know you charge a battery and also reduce speed so that thing that uh, feature or whatever you call it uh, i think all electric cars have it and uh, it's a really nice feature because you when you drive well you know to make things easier not to have to brake all the time but uh, when you go downhill let's say when you go uphill uh, you go up a mountain, 1,000 uh, meter or something, you know, 3,000 uh, feet. You actually spend extra energy, whatever. If it's a electric car like Tesla, yeah, you actually have to spend some extra, uh, extra electricity. 
if it's a fossil car, you actually have to spend extra fuel to get up there. But you see, with the Tesla, when you go downhill again, you can uh, regen most of the energy, about 80% will be captured and put back to the battery. And you also save your um, brakes because in some places, actually, if you go steep downhill long time, you could wear down your brakes to the point where um, it doesn't work anymore. So that hasn't happened to me. But see, just wearing less, you get less wear on the brakes. That's also another great feature. And again, with a fossil car, if you went up 1,000 meter and then when you go down again, well, unfortunately, the the fossil uh, engine doesn't doesn't have a mode where it can revert that process and then get fuel back when you go downhill. So, yeah. All right. Um, I have to talk about one uh, topic here. Yeah, the next topic is about the reduced power. So Tesla more or less is kind of known for uh, you know, reduced power and what what the heck is that? Okay, so this one is uh, the P85. It has uh, 421 horsepower, but you see that uh, power is only available for a limited time. So um, I would call it the peak power, whereas um, it is rated to have about 100 horsepower continuously. But what does that mean? Well, I have mentioned earlier that uh, when I do overtakes, I spend about three to five seconds to overtake something. Yeah, so um, maybe ten, up to ten seconds in the worst case if you want to overtake like I don't know um, a long truck or maybe like uh, five, six cars in one go. But um, you see, during that time, it doesn't take that long and. The peak power is plenty. Actually, the peak power is awesome because um, if I had to choose between, let's say, um, 150 horsepower, something, you know, continuous, like that's it, 150 horsepower, or like the Tesla where you have 400 something peak for uh, a minute and then 100 horsepower continuously, I would go with the Tesla. Because how often do you actually have to? output massive amounts of uh, power over time well okay there's one place where you probably need it and that is on uh, Norschleife in Germany Nürburgring yeah but that is a race track and this car is a family car it's not a race car it's not a sports car so um, I mean it is possible to drive around there I mean I've seen some times under was it under nine minutes around the ring with P85D is freaking awesome, yeah. <laughs> and, but it is not a track car. It's not an optimal for a track car. But like for a family car uh, or whatever car you want to use it for, you know, taxi or whatever. Like I would say, 99.9% .9 of the time, this car works great. It's just that tiny fraction that you want to use it for, maybe drag racing or track yeah then you no know, maybe a fossil car is better but i have done some uh, some high speed uh, driving in germany of course and at 160 kilometers per hour or 100 miles per hour this car performed great i had no heating issues at all so um and then i also did some uh, runs at uh, 200 kilometers per hour or 125 miles per hour and that was um okay well it was okay as long as uh, not too many um, people uh, cut in front of me. So I had to like reduce the speed and then accelerate again and reduce the speed and accelerate. That thing, yeah, generated extra heat and then eventually the car overheated and I could only cruise at let's say 180, 170 kilometers per hour. But as long as you drive at night and uh, stuff, uh, or at least have constant speed then you can actually cruise at 200 kilometers per hour but then again you see so this car with the peak power it's not optimal if you're a german and you want to drive a lot and fast i mean yeah so but then again this uh, these limitations that i'm talking about applies to my car and i have impression that uh, the newer cars the p85d that i drive right and has less of that issue like less of those those limitations they will also get the limitations but the, the lim limits are like pushed higher you have still have more power than my car 
so eventually I believe that uh, these limits will be like uh, not an issue anymore yeah all right so let's talk about next next topic yeah this video is freaking long oh yeah but anyway okay so if you're still uh, watching then great next topic is about uh, the mobile app so uh, Tesla comes with um, a 3G connection and actually nowadays they have uh, implemented 4G so you have in the newer cars you have 4G uh, connectivity and um, with uh, that connectivity you can uh, connect to your car and uh, do whatever we, what we call preheating which is you can start the heater from the app from your home or from your office or whatever wherever you are and either heat up, heat up or cool down the car and what's the point of that well I guess if you live in a hot uh, place then you want to enter the car nice and cool and if you live in a cool place like Norway you want to uh, yeah, enter the car without having to, uh, you know, scrape the windows for frost and all that stuff, and also nice and warm inside the car. And especially in Norway, when you preheat, when you're plugged in the wall, you will save a lot of energy, especially before you have to do a long trip where every kilowatt hour counts. And another nice feature about preheating is that uh, the battery, lithium ion battery that this car has, does not like to be charged or discharged when it's cold. It's actually bad for the battery. You can damage the battery or degrade it. So Tesla's uh, BMS, which is the battery management system, will always monitor it and keep the battery at a good health. And it will do whatever it takes to not damage the battery. So if the battery is too cold, it will uh, limit how much you can regen. Yeah, I talk about the regen, you know, when. It, so actually, when it's really cold, when you let off the pedal, you won't get that uh, de acceleration. You will actually just kind of you know, roll, almost like free rolling. But by using uh, preheating, you will uh, heat up the battery, and then you get more regen. So the, the car will, well, most important thing is that the car will uh, act more predictable than like you are used to. And um, also with the app you can start and stop monitoring charging and uh, see how how fast you are charging at and stuff like that and what kind of power you are charging at so actually I haven't tried too many electric cars but as far as I know the detail you get in the Tesla is like very, a lot and inside the car and also via the app you see a lot of stuff there like how fast you are charging and how many volts and all that stuff so as for me who is a tech geek I love it and also the app will notify you if um, charging was interrupted let's say uh, the, the charging station was down or someone unplugged the cable yeah that's also possible or um, actually you will also get a notification on the app if uh, the alarm was triggered that's uh, really nice yeah and, and a really great feature with the mobile app is that uh, you can actually, you don't have to use the key, you can just use your mobile phone to s unlock the car and even drive the car. And I have a separate video where I, when I was in, uh, on vacation in Thailand, I gave my friend, well the car was parked in Bodo obviously, but I gave my friend access, unlock the car for him and then I gave him access to move the car for me to charge it up. So that's also possible, and uh, also during that uh, that thing when he moved the car, I also had a tab where I can switch and see where the car was moving. You can see the position, the speed, and all that stuff. Actually, you can actually see if the car is uh, how much energy the car is spending or regenerating. So that's that's freaking awesome. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know any other car that can do that, and. As of today, the only uh, electric car, well actually I've tried two electric cars so far, but um, I tried the app on the BMW i3 and that um, app well, wasn't too responsive, actually yeah, uh, it didn't update that fast, I don't know why, but um, when I use the Tesla app, it is very responsive, you 
you open the tab and then you click on something you want to start the heater and you get almost immediately uh, a feedback about temperature inside and all that stuff so uh, that is really great and I should mention also that um, this this app is made from Tesla they are um, Tesla they have made a an open uh, what is it called again an, an, uh, a rest rest API it enables third parties to make their own app and there are actually uh, more apps out there like remote s which is for iPhone uh, iOS yeah and then also we have visible Tesla that's also a very known uh, app for um, uh, you have to run it on a computer, uh, desktop, something, and then you actually see more info, and you can do more than actually, yeah, than the mobile app allows you to. But this is all. This is great because um, it means that Tesla they give people this flexibility to do more. All right. Um, anyway, next topic is uh, about interior. So I have to talk a little bit about the interior in the Tesla. Yeah. The first time I saw Tesla uh, in a commercial or something uh, actually they, they don't do commercial but I saw it in some kind of review and the Tesla Model S and they had this huge 17 inch screen touch screen and I was thinking that is oversized this overkill what, what are you supposed to do with that huge screen but you know after using it for a while it's actually great, you know, it's like when I had, in the old days, when I had a tiny uh, mobile phone with buttons on it and a tiny screen, and then when I started using smartphone, it was like, holy crap, this is so much better. And the same thing is with the Tesla Model S, the huge screen might seem like overkill, but as soon as you get used to it, it is awesome. Like, I wonder why other people don't I mean, why, why other car manufacturers don't do the same because this is so intuitive and fast and and also really easy to read. Like, you can actually just you know, enter the car. I, I didn't read the manual when I started using a car. I just started pressing buttons and, and it was really easy to learn how to use it. Unlike some other cars that I had, and I had to grab the manual and see, like, try to look how I enter something in the navigation or something yeah and also the there is also a center screen that's the tiny screen that uh, you have speedometers and all that stuff and that one is also uh, I like it because um, the speedometer is displayed in digits digits and not like uh, most other cars where you actually have a manual gauge and you know I think that when you have uh, digits your eye and your brain will just read it will actually don't read it it will just recognize a shape let's say you're doing 80 kilometers per hour it recognizes the shape and then you know how fast you're driving whereas if you have manual gauge you actually have to look in the position where is that needle and then you have to do some extra processing to, okay I'm doing 80 kilometers per hour right so that's my opinion about this and I think that's great and also I love the, the the power meter and the regen meter well yeah on my car it's still, it is still there unfortunately this is like um yeah now the, they um, kind of remove that on um, the new cars with autopilot features so that's unfortunate I hope they will bring it back because it was good before 7.0 but that's not a topic um, as for the seats, I have uh, pretty old school seats. We have two, like mainly two types of seats. We have the, like the regular seats and what's called next generation seats. And the next generation seats they have better side support, uh, more like sporty seats. And well, I guess it's a personal uh, preference, but I kind of like the the old school seats because um, it. Uh, yeah, I, I feel like it has more room, whereas on the sport, like the sporty seat, the next generation seats, you sit more tight in there. But then again, the, the next gen seats are great when you do um, lots of twisty um, roads. 
or if you do track days, I guess. But um, as for most people, I think the standard seats are great. Uh, there's one thing though that uh, well, okay, let's talk about the stuff I'm missing on the Model S. The headrests are not adjustable, and that is so 1980 because um, they should have made it adjustable for to fit uh, different heads and all that stuff and different uh, height on people. So that's a bit uh, unfortunate. Uh, also, the the headrest on the rear seats are also fixed, not adjustable. And on my car, I have the old headrest, which are tiny. They have almost no function if someone would hit you from behind. On newer cars, they are higher, which is great, but because they are not adjustable, they will block lots of the rear view and they can't be flipped or adjusted down. So that's unfortunate. Yeah. So um, most other cars that I had, like the Renault Laguna and the, the BMW i, I mean the BMW um, 5 Series, uh, could do that. So um, yeah, right. More thing that I'm missing. Uh, the sun visors are too small. They are really tiny. Uh, as for me, I can live with it. But my wife, she's kind of small. So uh, actually. It is so short and small that uh, she has a problem with the uh, low sun. So that's a bit unfortunate. Most other cars, they have bigger sun visors. And also, behind the sun visors, you have this uh, mirror. And it's just, I don't know, it looks so cheap and simple. And I have another video when I talk about issues because the, the, the construction is really flimsy. So when you open this, uh, this uh, whatever it's called, uh, this lid to to see the mirror. First of all, it doesn't have a light for the for the mirror. That's a bit uh, unfortunate. And um, yeah, that lid breaks easy if you're not uh, careful. So I already broke it twice. Um, yeah, it should be like a sliding door, like other cars have. Yeah. And um, also, this car is missing handles where you can grab onto. So most other cars, they have handles over the doors, either front or back or both places. And also, many cars also have this uh, hook where you can hook your uh, your uh, shirt or something. Yeah, there. So that's unfortunate. This one doesn't have it. And um, if we move back to the trunk, this car is also missing. Um, uh, loading hooks in the trunks when you uh, fall down the seats and you want to load stuff in there then um, there's no way to secure your load with the hooks there but I found a workaround which is when you fall on the seats there are hooks where the seats are hooked at and then I <laughs> use those uh, hooks to uh, secure the load so it has worked for now but I would prefer to have uh, you know hooks in the bottom yeah, I can uh, strap down my load. And uh, this car only has two cup holders in the front, between the front seats. And that's it. Yeah, there are no cup holders for the rear. But if you get this uh, premium console, which fits in between the front seats, then you have some extra cup holders there. So, um, yeah. All right, let's talk a little bit about exterior then. I think the, the Tesla Model S just looks awesome, gorgeous. I mean, pretty much from any angle, from the rear, from the front, from the side, they, they, they did a great job designing the car. It looks, I don't know, it is a huge car, but they just designed it with the lines and all that to, to look great. Yeah, I don't know how much to say about it. Yeah, so the design is great and also love the illuminated door handles when you know the door handles they extend and then there's lights there so it lights up the floor that could be great for, for um, yeah dark days and um, also for my car this is a uh, uh, rear wheel drive so the front the front trunk is huge yeah I can fit like a 20 inch wheel in there and uh, a suitcase and stuff and I don't know how many times I, that Frank have saved me with, in terms of luggage space 
so it is awesome yeah and my car also has panorama roof which is great because uh, it will uh, bring in some extra light unfortunately the panorama roof also um, because this one doesn't have that um, well, many cars they have this extra like uh, like a lid or something or sliding something where you can totally block the sun roof but whereas this one doesn't have it so it's always open I and mean, like the sun will always shine in there if you have sun of course but I have found a workaround where I put this uh, acoustic foam and then I put this um, sunshade from Tesla so I actually block out all the sun yeah but then again um, because um, if you have the panorama roof, there will actually be some kind of like, leakage of, of um, I would say like a cold chill. Yeah, if you drive in cold weather, most of the time under zero degrees Celsius, you will get this cold chill from above. And yeah, with this uh, thing here, the foam, I don't feel anything. Yeah, so it's great. And with this option, I can remove it whenever I like yeah so all right um i have to talk a little bit about uh, some missing stuff i would say the headlight washers they don't exist on this car so um that's uh, very unfortunate in norway because we have salted roads and after driving for half an hour not even half an hour yeah on salted roads the front the the, the lights gets slightly more dim so um i found a workaround for it of course which is to bring a squirt ball with um, uh, washer uh, fluid and then i just spray the the light headlights when needed uh, yeah so um, it's like a silly workaround they couldn't put some headlight washers in there uh, this car was designed for sunny california so yeah and also now to complain a little bit more, um, the washer fluid nozzles are really bad. It's like, they are like, I don't know, you get uh, four strips of uh, washer fluid on the front windshield and that's it. And then the in combination with, uh, I don't know, not very good uh, wiper blades, most of the time when I'm driving in winter, I get these um, strips of salt. Yeah. You can see it in my, my videos. I tried to I don't know, block them out, but uh, yeah. So uh, that's unfortunate. On other cars, they, they spray it evenly. And we are probably, probably talking about um, a $1 component or something, the, the, f the nozzle mm, to replace. Just replace the nozzle with something better, and then you get even uh, uh, distribution of uh, washer fluid. Um, one workaround for me is of course that I have to slow down because when I'm driving at 60 kilometers per hour or faster then the washer will the, the the washer fluid will be like sprayed on the wrong places but if I slow down to 20 kilometers per hour or lower then it will actually hit the right places and then I can actually clean the the front windshield so again it's like silly workaround yeah all right, and then the next um, disadvantage is um, um, weak reverse light. It only, it only has one reverse light on the EU models, which is mine. On the other side, we have um, fog lights. So um, it is kind of dim, there's one LED light. And if you have to back up somewhere where it's dark, then you can't see much. But there's also another workaround, of course, which is if you enable um, a creep mode creep will actually it will simulate a fossil car so if you put the car in drive or in reverse and then you let off the brake then the car will uh, either drive forward or backwards or like automatically whereas most most of the time i don't have that on so i have to actually apply power yeah but you see the workaround is that put the car in creep mode and then when you put it in the reverse you use your brakes to to slow down the car but also the brake lights will light up the rear for you so yeah that's another workaround yeah but you see i have a little problem now because uh, i didn't expect this video to be that long so um 
my batteries are running out so I actually had to charge up a little bit and then I had to resume this video all right I'm back again so um, I just uh, swapped the battery yeah I have a bigger one there but um, yeah actually I should mention that Tesla Model S can swap the battery pack and it takes only 90 seconds to get well you swap out your almost empty battery to a new full, full one and um, that feature was introduced uh, a while ago and uh, but most people they didn't want it because you actually have to pay some money for it and like I mentioned you know most people they need to stop anyway on long trips for uh, restroom and food and all that stuff so they didn't really see the point of it uh, yeah but the feature is there maybe one day it will be more common but uh, yeah so okay anyway let's talk about the next next topic which is uh, passenger space so um, I have mentioned earlier that uh, I think the front seats are, are pretty good and um, I guess this is like a personal preference that um, I like them okay they might have limited side support but uh, most of the time it works great so um, even on windy Norwegian roads and then um, the Okay, well, here's a picture of uh, my messy center control space or whatever you call it. I also mentioned earlier that you can get a center console. So it's like a, an add-on, add-in, add-on something you put in there where you can have a cup holder and then a holder for your phone and stuff and all that stuff. So it will make the car look more exclusive and also maybe more usable. But as for me, I actually love that open space. I put like you've seen, m lots of stuff there. I have my uh, uh, 12 volt to 220 volt uh, transformer, and some, I don't know, wifey has some uh, sunglasses. I have a charger and a cup and stuff there. And also on trips, we have drinks and food, and everything goes in there in the center there. That's awesome. I love that open space. Uh, okay, and um, that was the front uh, area and the rear seats. They have limited leg room and depth because the battery pack is placed under the under this uh, cabin, so it kind of steals some of the space. And I am uh, 173 centimeters, and if you have you know, people with long legs, I think they will not be that comfortable sitting there for long times, long trips. So um, that's a bit uh, downside with this car. I guess maybe the space is better on Model X than, yeah, it, which is a SUV version of this. And also the rear seats, like most other cars, you can fold down the middle uh, seat and it will become an armrest or a table or something. But this car doesn't have it. But then again, you get this extra. Uh, Thing you can put in there you I think you click it in the child uh, seat ISO fix or something but um, and then you get this uh, like console like armrest or something in the back but uh, an extra cup holders or, but then what if you don't need it anymore then you have to remove it or let's say uh, you will have more passengers in the back so it's a clumsy solution I think they should have made it like other cars and also most other cars you can uh, like open the middle to to make room for some long items let's say skis or something this one if you want to make room then you have to fold the whole uh, seat down I mean one at least two of the seats and yeah, you know what I mean yeah so and also the rear seats they have limited heating or cooling but that has something to do with the uh, the autom like how the the automatic uh, setting works uh, as far as I know if you use uh, custom mode and you manually override some of the settings it will be sufficient but not the best because it has some um, some vents in the this console between the front um, seats where you have air coming out there and also under the front seats there's also some vents but that's it there are no vents on the side the B pillars and no nothing in the back so um, actually when you have the, the 
rare jump seats for children then uh, you don't get any heating or cooling in the back and that's uh, that's actually a problem if you live in either cold or, warm or very warm places so uh, especially in warm places um, people have complained that uh, it's too hot in there on sunny days so they have to tint the windows yeah and but then again I think those issues that I mentioned now they, they are better on the Model X I've seen like more vents yeah on the Model X but that's a different car and I have also seen that the, when you use child seats on the Model X I mean Model X, sorry yeah I only have Model X in my mind nowadays sorry but you know when you use the child seats uh, there are Isofix uh, in inside like kind of deep inside the, the seats I don't have children, so I'm, I'm not too uh, familiar with those uh, Isofix uh, stuff. But um, actually, I heard that uh, when you have child seats in the back there, it will make dents in the leather. So um, if you have it too long there, it might be permanent. So um, I don't know. Maybe some people they put uh, a blanket or something in between to make not make dents. Yeah. All right. Next topic is about um, space for luggage, and this car is a beast when it comes to that. I mentioned the front, the trunk, the front uh, trunk. It can hold a lot of items, and in the back you also have a lot of items. Let's not forget this car is almost five meter long. It is bigger than uh, like most family cars, so um, it has a lot of space. And actually, some people have um, compared this Mol S with a Mercedes E Class, and this one has more space than it. I haven't compared it myself, but uh, yeah, I believe that claim. I put lots of stuff in this car, and it's really impressive. Um, you also have this space under the, the trunk where, well, if you have child seats, it will be there, but if you don't have the, uh, the rear jump seats, then you have extra space there and if you remove that uh, lid you can actually put some big items in the back there and the space will actually be similar or better than an estate because you have the, the dip in there it's kind of deep and also the rear seats they fold almost flat there is this little yeah there's this this uh, dent up there so uh, that I mean, does, it's not doesn't matter that much because um, I have loaded big long items in the back there when I do did the nimber task and it works great. So um, uh, I think the longest item I have put in here was like well at least one of the large items like about two meters, and then I have to put it a little bit uh, on the side here, but uh, you can usually fit like one hundred. We say 180 centimeters of item, yeah, six feet long, so that works great. And also, the molest comes with roof rack, so you can put your skis or you can put your ski box up there, and also you can put uh, bicycles, yeah. I also invested in this um, bicycle rack, and I guess, yeah, people have put canoes up there, kayak, and well, I also did. I put the pallet up there once and I put four tires on the roof. So this Mol S is a beast when it comes to hauling luggage. It is insane. Yeah. Uh, only thing it is missing is a tow bar. There are other people who have you know, like installed retrofitted tow bars, but um, yeah, um, officially it doesn't have it. But eventually it should have it because there has been some spy shots of um, Mol S with a tow bar pulling some heavy loads, a boogie uh, trailer or something, yeah. So they are kind of heavy. So mm, the car is capable of pulling a lot of stuff. I know a friend who has uh, retrofitted tow bar, he has a P85D and he pulls stuff like it wasn't even there, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
And uh, of course, because this car is so huge and we have lots of space in the back, we have used it many times for uh, sleeping. And uh, I also mentioned that you can put this car in this um, camper mode, uh, call it, where the heater is running all day, all night. And we can sleep uh, in the back there, even if uh, it's freezing temperature outside, we are comfortable in the back here. We just, we have this uh, air mattress, but we inflate and stuff, and then yeah, it's great, great. All right, um, let's talk a little bit about support and service. Uh, every time, well, I have had some issues with this car. You can see in a separate video about it. But you see, every time I had an issue, Tesla, they are very responsive, and very helpful with uh, fixing the problem. Um, there are mainly two issues. We have critical issues and then I would say non-critical non issues. And the, the critical issues are issues where I can't drive the car or it's like um, dangerous to drive the car, for instance, when the, when the windshield wiper motor failed. So when we, I had critical issues, Tesla, they uh, fixed it almost immediately. They fixed it really fast and that is important. And of course, they fixed it on the warranty. I had, didn't have to pay anything. Also the same with the, the non-critical issues, they also fix it on the warranty because it's most, like, I don't think, uh, most of my issues were known, well-known issues with this car. And you see, we've been traveling a lot around Norway and also we have done some Europe trips and Tesla, they have, um, they have service centers all over Europe. So um, actually last year, we did went on a, on a road trip and we had issues in Paris, outside of Paris. And we could contact the Paris, uh, wait, what was it? Amsterdam? But anyway, I don't remember. Yeah, I've been so much around everywhere. But uh, they have service centers where they can fix the car or take a look and help you all over Europe. So uh, that's awesome. You don't have to like, go to your local uh, dealership or something yeah but again yeah okay that was the good things about uh, Tesla uh, there are some bad things also when you come when it comes to um, non-critical issues let's say um, if uh, there's some squeaking here or something like that you know like stuff that you can live with then usually it takes a very long time like if you want to book uh, an appointment to get some things fixed you might have to wait like two to four months that is of course because uh, tesla they have a lot to do and uh, they have lots of customers especially in norway so uh, the good thing though, is that they are uh, constantly expanding uh, for instance in um, oslo when i received the car i received the car at the service center that was called uh, uh, Alna, Alna Blue, yeah, very close to where I lived. And then, during those years when I started driving more or less, uh, another one popped up, Sköjen. So yeah, Sköjen, service center, and also uh, sales uh, office, I think, yeah. And then another one popped up, uh, Grorud. So Oslo, they had like three offices, and now they have opened another one, Rud, which is slightly more west. So you see, in already in in, uh, in popular places like Oslo, there are four service centers. Yeah. So hopefully they are fixing that uh, issue with a long wait time. And every time I had these issues, uh, well, I've, many times I was offered um, a loaner, especially when I had critical issues where I needed a car because my own car wasn't drivable. Then they offered me free loaner and also free pickup uh, with a tow truck or whatever, uh, with no cost, of course. And many times, uh, they uh, when they fixed the car for me, I received it, washed inside and out, vacuum clean, everything. Yeah, like, oh, awesome. So, um, uh, that is awesome with the service. Uh, I don't have too many, okay, well, I do have um, other cars, other car makes that I can compare with. I, I used to have Renault and Hyundai and um, BMW. So those other uh, brands, mm, I don't know. Um, 
They didn't. No, no, I, I don't want to talk about them, but uh, I just I want just want to say that uh, I am happy with the Tesla service. Yeah. Um, again, uh, okay. Next topic is about the issues and the repairs, and I have a separate video about that. So uh, if you want to know more details about it, just take a look. Now, I have a lot of issues with this car. I'm not gonna lie to you. But let's not forget this uh, car was from 2013. It was like one of the earlier models that came out. So um, many of those issues that I have has been fixed on the newer cars. So, um, and also, let me see. I think all the issues that I had, like, yeah, except for a few, once it was fixed, it was fixed and the problem didn't come back again. So that's also very important. And also, all the issues were fixed for free. So I haven't paid anything for those issues because, like I mentioned, you know, all these issues, they were common, common known, common problems with the Model S. So I didn't have to argue with Tesla and you know, saying that, oh, yeah, like, like they, they didn't try to ask me, like, make me pay for it or something. They just fix it. No discussion. All right. And um, next topic, which I also have uh, a separate video about, is uh, running cost. So, how much did it actually cost to drive this car for insane amount of kilometers? Well, uh, I conclude that it was uh, actually pretty uh, low because uh, you know this electric car don't have. Let me see. It doesn't have a. Um, uh, it doesn't have a gearbox. It doesn't have a, a spark plugs. It doesn't have a exhaust system. It doesn't have turbo. There's no oil change. That like lots of stuff that can go wrong on a fossil car. This car doesn't have it. So the running cost is really low. And electricity is low, and then supercharging is free. So yeah, they have it really low. So. If you want to know more details, just look at the separate video about it. Um, okay, I need to mention one thing though. That is um, battery cost. Also, many fossils, they use this argument that, yeah, okay, your car might be cheap to run, but what if you have to replace the battery? Well, you know, uh, Tesla Model S comes with 8-year unlimited kilometer warranty on battery pack and drive unit. Drive unit includes the motor and the inverter and some other stuff the, the the critical parts on this car the critical and expensive parts are covered under eight year unlimited kilometer warranty so even as today i still have like five and something years left of the warranty so um if the battery pack would break down or something not degrade degrading is not degradation is not uh, included in in the warranty but if the battery pack would fail and I would be unable to drive the car then Tesla will have to fix it for free or uh, give me a new battery pack so um, like as of today well, let's say the, the earliest car they came in 2012 in America and if you add eight years to that you will get 2020 so in four years the first Model S in America might have to change battery. But I actually suspect that if to in 2020, if there would be a, an issue with something, Tesla, they might actually, you know, do an exception and uh, replace that battery for free if they know that this is like a common failure or something. But um, anyway, what was my point? Well, my point was that Talking about uh, battery cost today is in irrelevant because nobody needs to replace it and pay for it unless like, unless you want to upgrade. Let's say you have you have a, a 60 kilowatt hour battery pack and you want to upgrade to 85, but I don't recommend it. Nobody recommend it. What you should do is to sell that car and then buy another car with 85 kilowatt hour battery pack or 90, whatever you need. So, like, 
for most people now today nobody needs to buy a battery pack so because the, the there has been some um, some rumors or some uh, facts about the battery pack that is really expensive yeah it is very expensive to to replace it but that price might be might have something to do with uh, supply demand because from what i heard one battery pack less means one car less for tesla because they have tight su like supply for battery but tesla they are building the gigafactory which can produce a lot of batteries and that will bring down the cost of battery packs so um in four years hopefully in four years the the gigafactory will be operational and pumping a lot of batteries and bring down the cost so um i assume that uh, when someone actually need a new battery pack for tesla and they need to pay it for themselves then the price will be lower so talking about price today is in, irrelevant all right so i'm getting close to the end now this is freaking long <sighs> yeah um next topic is is tesla tesla model s or tesla a car for you well um in many countries uh, tesla model s is very expensive we have some exceptions like in norway with really good ex um, incentives and also very high price uh, very high tax on fossil cars that makes tesla model s a very nice uh, like a good um, good option but for most other places it is too expensive so you just have to keep in mind that this is an expensive car but then again the um, the gain is high you you pay almost nothing to keep it running and also the the, the performance is awesome so um the mol x also which is the sub version of this will be slightly more expensive than the mol s so there you go you have two really expensive cars yeah but Mm, would you want it um, I mean is this a car for you well if you can afford it and if you um, we can um, wait for the charge then maybe but you see there will be a model 3 soon well at least there will be it will be revealed and uh, I don't know how many years it will take before we actually can drive one but the model 3 will be slightly smaller but then again the other Model S is pretty huge. Model S is almost five meters, and it's been said that Model Three is smaller, maybe like 450, 470, and then so it will like compete with smaller cars like the BMW 3 Series or uh, like a like a Passat or something or a Audi A A4, A6 maybe Mercedes C Class, yeah, something like that. So it is still. A nice good uh, spacious uh, family car and it will be a lot more affordable uh, we still don't know yet how much it will cost but the rumors say that it will cost like one third of a model s so but most important thing is that the model 3 will have access to supercharger network and that is huge with supercharger network you can drive pretty much everywhere in Europe or if you live in America you can drive everywhere in North America or in well you have um, Japan and China and all that stuff but uh, yeah you get my point so um, back to the topic is Tesla a car for you um, I mentioned earlier I mean in the, all the way in the beginning I'm gonna talk about charging home charging and stuff if you have uh, uh, possibility to charge at home if you live in a house or whatever or if you have power in your garage or if you can charge at work then that is a great advantage because if you don't have it then you are kind of stuck you have to charge you have to rely on public charging and when you do that you, you might have to wait for the car whereas if you have charging at home or at work you don't wait for it you just plug in and then you do whatever you have to do so if you have charging at home at work then that's a great advantage it's yeah if you don't have it then um, yeah but then again if you live close to a supercharger 
then you might consider you know, visiting a supercharger and charge up there. But see, the supercharger network is primarily for people who will travel far. So um, yeah, because um, but it's also like a hot discussion going on. Like, I mean, should local people use a supercharger? Mm, well, yeah. Well, I'm not going to take that discussion. But you see, when you visit a local supercharger you have to do it like regularly you, it will become like visiting a gas station fuel up and but it takes longer so in my opinion to use supercharger or public charger is a, a great disadvantage if you want to have a tesla i know some people who uh, bought the tesla and they have to do uh, they have to recharge outside of home or it's, it's a hassle yeah Okay, that's for the charging and stuff. Um, so, um, uh, another thing I mentioned earlier was um, this car is not optimal for uh, driving on tracks. So, uh, it's a huge car, heavy car, and it has some limitation when it comes to overheating and power. So, it is not a track car. If you want to have a good track car, you probably need to buy a, a Tesla Roadster or a Mercedes SLS Electric or something. Yeah, if you want electric. So, um, yeah. And last thing is, um, of course, if you need to have a car which can do 1,000 kilometers in one go, and then you only have to stop for five minutes to charge up or refuel and then do another 1,000 kilometers, then this car is not for you. Um, all right. Last topic that I will talk about now is... Um, would I buy Tesla again? Well, absolutely. So, uh, I think this car is an awesome car, and uh, I'm not trying to be a fanboy. Like, I try to, to be as uh, neutral as possible, you know, look at both the good sides and the bad sides with Tesla. But still, I had some other cars before, like the Renault. <laughs> yeah. And, and the BMW, that's awesome car. Renault actually is also awesome. Yeah, the, the car. I also had the Hyundai before. That's also an awesome car. But again, this car is like with a big screen. You know the connectivity with the app, and you know uh, just knowing that you run on on pure electricity. At least in Norway, it's pure and clean, and all the tech stuff, and also good service most of the time and all that stuff you know despite all the issues and the downside I think this car is awesome and also the network and the whole service uh, around it and you know what for many people if if you compare the cost uh, all of it not just buying the car but you know for running it and depreciation and all that stuff and if you crunch all the numbers and the car this one equals to uh, whatever, let's say, a, a BMW 5 Series, 7 Series, Mercedes S-Class or 5, I mean, E-Class or whatever. And you get the same numbers and you actually consider this car because, um, yeah, um, it should be the same, you know, price-wise. I would still choose this car because um, it is better for the, for the environment. And... I'm living in Norway with clean air. We have um, about 95% of the electricity comes from hydropower. But even if I was living in China or something where the, the power comes from coal, I would still choose Tesla because the car is more uh, efficient. This is another discussion. It is more efficient than a um, fossil car. Fossil car, the fossil fuel is so dirty from um, yeah where it came from. You can't just look at the the CO2 emission you have to look at the whole chain so uh, yeah so uh, my claim of course is that Tesla or electric cars are more environmentally friendly than uh, a fossil car so if you can choose let's say if you can choose between a plastic bag or a paper bag and the price is the same then you should choose the paper bag you know, it's better for the environment and um, also this uh, this like there's uh, this community with owners and also people who are interested in Tesla 
this community I think it's great because you can ask them questions or you can uh, share stuff with them it's, it's like and also well I had some uh, some help some people they helped me move move, move the stuff here and all that stuff so so uh, I think the the whole Tesla community is great it's helpful and also uh, I get the impression that many of them are are pretty skilled and they know a lot of stuff about car and like, electricity and all that stuff so um yeah that's awesome and of course to wrap up you know um tesla with this car with this awesome range and the supercharging network they are changing the the car industry so um believe I me mean, even if you like it or not you know eventually something's gonna something's gonna change and then I believe that Tesla is doing, they are actually doing this. They are changing the car uh, industry and I want to be a part of it. Um, yeah, I think that was it. It was uh, one and a half hours long. But uh, yeah, uh, I think I'm <laughs> sorry for making such a long video, but it's just that I had a lot to say and also i have drive a lot so uh i wanted to share my experience with you guys so i hope you like this uh, really long ass video and uh, if you have any comments or questions then uh, feel free to ask me